Giants baseball is on the air. How are you doing, everybody? This is Russ Hodges, along with Lon Simmons and Bill Thompson, bidding you welcome to another Giants ball game from Honey Mac Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight's game between the Giants and the Philadelphia Phils is brought to you by Berkey, the comfortable beer. It's soft water brewed to refresh you and keep right on refreshing. Berkey. And by the people at Pacific Telephone who remind you when it comes to communications, we're here to help. Also by the Standard Oil Company of California and its dealers who invite you to come to Chevron Island for a welcome change of scene. You'll like the spirit. And by Roos Atkins, the giant in men's clothing in the West. With 48 locations in the West and Hawaii, there's a Roos Atkins near you. Beautiful evening in Philadelphia as the San Francisco Giants greet the umpires at home plate and we'll have the starting lineups in one moment. Did you ever stop to think what you're doing right now is several years ago when some Englishman hadn't started playing a game called Rounders? What about this? Suppose some guy back in Mesopotamia hadn't said to himself one hot Saturday you can't do it. Hey, I think I'm going to make myself a glass of beer. You know what we're doing, doing right now? We'd probably all be out in the backyard flinging frisbees and getting thirsty. But praise me, those things happen, and here we are today with a great game and a great beer. Baseball and Berkey are kind of a match set. In fact, Berkey makes a ball game because even if it goes into extra innings, Berkey is just as easy to drink in the 14th as it was in the 1st. It's comfortable all the time, every time, good tasting and comfortable. You ought to get yourself some of this beer that's brewed with soft water because it refreshes and keeps right on refreshing. If the beer you're drinking doesn't do that, then you're not drinking the comfortable beer. Berkey. This broadcast authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the San Francisco Giant solely for the entertainment of our listening audience and any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the San Francisco Giants is prohibited. Here's our answer. just told me to tell you that I have a cold as though you don't know it. I caught it in the city of brotherly love and I'd like to give it back to him. The whole darn city. Gary Wagner making his second start and his third start of his life. He was in a no decision loss to Cincinnati Tuesday. But he's rated quite a prospect. The Giants with Bonds in right, Hunt at second, Mays in center, McCovey at first, Davenport at third, Henderson left, Deets catching, Lanier shortstop, and Gaylord Perry is the pitcher. For the Philadelphia Phils, Taylor will be at third, Briggs in center field, 
Allen at first base, Callison in right, Johnson in left, Rojas at second, Money at shortstop, Mike Ryan catching, Gary Wagner pitching. Bob Ripley from Auburn, California, here this evening. Wanting to be reminded, remember to all of his friends in the Bay Area. Bobby Bonds to face young right-hander Gary Wagner. Nineteen sixty-eight record, four and four, one and one against the Giants. Here's the pitch to Bobby Bonds. Blow it inside for ball one. Dave Davidson behind the plate. Bonds flashes at the right field for a clean base hit. And the batter will be Ron Hunt. Everybody in Reno, Bernie Hill sailor Bill Harrison asked us to say hello for him. Bill hopes he'll enjoy every game during the 69 season along with Bernie, the comfortable beer. Right under Gary Wagner to face Ron Hunt. First base, Bonds is back in. Another throw to first, almost throws it away. Bonds was batting 289. Hunt is up here with an average of 196. That 200 barrier has been quite a mental hazard to Ronnie. There's a base hit down the left field line in the boat of the corner. We'll watch Bond. He may even score. He's rounding third on his way to the plate. And the Giants lead one to nothing on a close line drive into the left field corner by Ron Hunt. And watching Bobby Bond's run is a real pleasure. That must have been a real pleasure. His fifth run batted in, his second double. Willie Mays will be the joint stop. Now here's the pitch by Wagner to Willie Mays. Runs up to Buck, takes the pitch inside. Paul Pryor is umpiring at uh, first base. Tony Benson at second. The pitch to Mays, a swing on a big hook, strike one. Frank Sicori is umpiring at third. Two consecutive hits with a run home. Mays digs in deep in the batter's box. And Wagner gets set to throw again. Mays swings them to drive to deep center field. Hunt tags will try for third. Briggs is up with the long throw to third base, and Hunt slides in safely. That ball was hit like a bullet right at Briggs. Hunt had started to come in and then ran back to second and tagged the bag. Jumped away to a four to nothing lead over Cincinnati in the first inning. Here's Willie McCutton. The infield is in. They're going to pitch to him. Wagner throws a call strike over the outside. But 
Covey with an average of 292. He hit 293 last year. Left-handed here with the outfielders back. McCovey stretches. The ball hits the end of the bat and fouls away for strike two. Hunter's at third base. The infield is in. Wagner has a scene perturbed. Hasn't slowed his pace out there. Wagner delivers to McCovey. A check swing. The pitch is outside for ball one. One ball and two strikes. Here's the right hander winding. He throws to McCovey. Fouls it back to the stands. The count goes to one and two. Or holds it one. It will not be dark here in Philadelphia for another hour. As this has started at right at the twilight hour at 7.30 in the east. With Richie Allen in close at first base. And Wagner delivers to McCovey who takes high and away for ball two and a count of two and two. One to nothing, the Giants lead. We're trying to get Gaylord Curry a cushion here. Hawk comes down the line at third. Wagner throws. McCovey checks, swings. It's ball three. Mike Ryan is in search of Dave Davidson. But McCovey went through with the swing. He's gotten away with a couple of half swings at some umpires would have called a swing. Wagner ready. Now the pitch to McCovey. Outside for ball four, there are runners at first and third, and Jimmy Davenport will be the Giants' batter. No activity for the Bills in their bullpen as yet. Davenport up here with a batting average of 236. The infield back now. And Wagner will discuss the situation with his pitcher, or with his catcher, Mike Ryan. Number 12, Davenport batting. The right-hander throws to Jimmy. A call strike on the inside corner. Rojas is well over towards second. The first baseman, Allen, is keeping McCovey close to first, so there's a shot to the right side available. Davenport hits one there. Base hit in the right field. On his way to third base is McCovey. Callison comes up, throws to third base. McCovey slides in safe. Scores and the Giants lead two to nothing. Callison made a good throw, but McCovey came in there with a fine slide. Davenport looking for the hole, hit it right through there. Kenny Hennis will be the batter now, and that hole will no longer be available. Rojas will play in the baseline. Davenport drives in a run. His 12th of the year. Kenny Henderson, a left-handed batter tonight. Didn't do anything as a right-hander last night. The pitch to Kenny, swung on and foul to the right side. Two to nothing, the Giants lead. Now a right-hander is throwing down to the bullpen. Bill Wilson a right hand one out Davenport at first McCovey at third Wagner ready throws to Henderson high and outside for a ball ball of a strike Johnny Briggs straight away and deep in center Darren Johnson near the left field fence 
Now the one and one stretch. The pitch to Henderson. A swing and a foul back for strike two. Kenny came in here hitting over 400. There's no 370 when he came in here. Now he's down to 323. One ball, two strikes. Gary Wagner ready, throws to Henderson. Kenny takes strike three, called over the outside. And we send along congratulations to Ozzie Virgil on his birthday today. Dick Deeks batting for the Giants. Batting 228. Started a hit since he's had a chance to get back in the lineup. Wagner throws to Deeks. High ball one. Davenport leading at first base. McCovey at third. The Giants lead two to nothing. Gary Wagner throws to Deeks. Inside for ball two. Deeks licks his chops now, thinking perhaps there's a fastball on the way. That was a breaking pitch. Two and all the count to number two as Wagner's ready. He throws. Deeks swings and bounds it to shortstop. Good well hit ball, but an easy put out at second base on the play. Don Money. Cookie Rojas on the side is retired. For the Giants, two runs, three hits. No errors. Two left on. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Philadelphia bats, and the Giants lead by two. A bright day, so comfortable. The feel of a breeze blowing. That's Bergie. Bergie is comfortable beer because it's brewed with soft water to really taste good all the time. If you miss it today, make it tomorrow. Bergie. You'll be so comfortable with Bergie the Comfortable Beer. Taylor will be the leadoff batter against Gaylord Perry. Batting average of 276. Tonight's crowd approximates that of last evening. It may get a bit bigger. It's around 10 to 12,000. As Perry's into the windup for the first pitch to Taylor. Low for ball one. George Myatt coaching at third. Billy DeMars at first. Now the 1 0 pitch. Taylor takes high for ball two. 2 0. Here's the 2-0 delivery by Gaylord. In there for a foul strike at 2-1. and one. Swings on the next delivery and fouls it off to the right side. J. 
two and two. And the two two pitch to Taylor swung on and bounded towards center field. Not knocks the ball down, can't make the play. Taylor is on. Johnny Briggs will be the batter. And Briggs against the Giants would be playing every day. He's only an ordinary ball player against the rest of the league, but against the Giants, he wears them out. Batting only 149 in 24 games. Left-handed hitter against Gaylord Perry with Richie Allen to follow. Taylor with his lead. The Giants lead two to nothing. Perry throws to Briggs. Strike called over the outside. Briggs played them all in college. Flanker in football. Guard in basketball. But decided on baseball. Perry lobs to first. Taylor is back in. The left-handed batter, wearing number 12, Johnny Briggs. Perry comes over the top. Briggs swings and misses, and it's strike two. He foul tipped the ball. Covey keeps the runner close. Now Perry's into the stretch. He throws to Briggs. A swing and a foul. He's still alive as Deeks could not hold on. Atlanta and Montreal, that game has been postponed. Mets lead Cincinnati 4 to nothing at the end of an inning. Cleveland defeated Oakland 5 to 4. The Yankees shut out California behind Thompson 6 to nothing. Boston defeated Seattle 6 to 1. Other games tonight Pittsburgh at Los Angeles, Chicago at Houston. Here's the stretch. Perry throws to Briggs. Low and outside for a ball. Cardinals are at San Diego tonight, we neglected to mention. Perry stretches, he throws. Briggs swings, fouls it away. Mays is shading Briggs into right center. Bobby Ponds deep and right. Perry wipes off the perspiration. Now it's ready to go. His pitch to Briggs is swung on and missed for strike three. Richie Allen will be the batter. Then hitting star of last night's game, scoring two runs, driving in two. Batter with an average of 330, 23 runs batted in, six homers. And when Richie hits one, no park in the country can hold it. The pitch to Allen is swung on and foul down the right field line. Strike one. Lead at first base by Tony Taylor. Number 15, Allen Whiting. Perry ready. Throws again. Allen swings and misses, and it's strike two. 
Johnny Callison is hitting in the number four spot tonight. Allen will strike out a lot, so will Bobby Bonds. But they'll still get their share of base hits and long drives. There he throws again to Allen. That's one on and foul back. He got that one up, and Allen really took a whack at it. One down, a runner at first. And Allen asks for a look at the baseball, and Perry lobs it into Dick Deach, who hands it to Dave Davidson. It almost slips out of his hand. Davidson throws it back to Gaylord Perry. Here's the 0-2 delivery. Taylor goes. Allen bounds it to Davenport at third. Up with it. Cross the diamond inside. Johnny Callison will be the batter with a runner at second base. Maybe you wonder how we spend our time in the afternoons when we've got a night game. Lottie and I and Bill watch the afternoon ball game. And also the Pinkness. Rich Smalley, the adventuresome sort, an old Californian and all. He dates back to the gold rush days. Went downtown and watched the hold up. <laughs> Nothing beats old Rich. The pitch to Johnny Callison, low for ball one. Ball and no strikes as Perry sets. He throws again to Callison, who swings and misses. Take a look at Rich's gray hair. You'd think he'd see the hold up every day. I think probably he does. Here's the one and one pitch for Gaylord Perry to Callison. Swung on and bounded to Ron Hunt. Right in front of the ball for the easy toss to McCovey to retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. One runner is left on. We have gone one full inning. And the Giants lead two to nothing. You know the old saying, experience is the best teacher? Well, it really holds true when you're talking about Fergie's, the comfortable beer. Pop open one of those king-sized cans of Fergie and pour yourself a tall, ice-cold glassful. Take a sip. Right away, you'll experience the light, refreshing taste that soft water brewing gives to Fergie. Then, after another glass or two, you'll find that Fergie's cold, wet refreshment keeps right on refreshing you. Non-stop refreshment. That's Fergie, the comfortable beer. <laughs> rather disappointed in the Preakness today. I'd rather have seen that race between Rich and the hold-up man. The hold-up man going one direction and Rich going the other. Here's Hal Lanier facing Gary Wagner. Lanier at 214 takes a call strike. seen him come out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, right. To <laughs> run over one of those grooms behind the side gate. Well, there stings that foul on the left side. Oh, 
Number 22 for the Giants, Hal Lanier. Gary Wagner pumps, throws. Lanier takes one high and outside all the way to the backstop. One ball and two strikes. Lanier does a double take. He doesn't believe that Wagner was throwing at him. He's the only guy up there, so <laughs> yeah, it's true. Wagner ready with one and two, delivered to Lanier. Outside for ball two and strike two. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Lanier swings, bounds it towards shortstop. Money is there, has it, throws to first. Lanier is retired. It's out number one, and we'll pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. This is KSFO San Francisco. Spokesman at Herrick Hospital in Berkeley say there is no truth to rumors being circulated that one of the gunshot victims of Thursday's turmoil in Berkeley had died. The hospital stresses that no one has died as a result of the Berkeley disturbance. Pitch to Perry is nubbed slowly down the third baseline. Wagner off the mound, throws the ball in the right field. Fan Brick leads over to grab it, and that gives Gaylord second base, and he might have had trouble making second base had it not been for the cooperation of the fan on the stand, as Callison was right uh, very close to the play. Error all the way. One beer, Berkey, the comfortable beer, is soft water brewed for the taste of it. Refreshes you every time. Bonds will bat for the Giants. He let off with a single. Scored the first run. Right-handed hitter against the right-handed pitcher as the Giants lead two to nothing. Here's Gary Wagner throwing to the plate. Bonds takes a high slider, good for a call strike, just at the letter. Short sleeve weather in Philadelphia tonight. The next pitch to Bonds, swung on, hit up the middle, but Money gets in front of it, throws to third base, and they nail Gaylord Perry, who came into third base standing up, could not knock the ball out of his love with Tony Taylor. So, Bonds is on, and in a steal situation now, that's a fielder's choice. Hunt doubled Bonds home his last time, his first hit of the Philadelphia series. Neither team exactly wore out the ball last night as Philadelphia won 3-1. Bonds has not tried to steal against this combination. He's got a chance now. He's 9-0. He leads at first, and Wagner throws to first base. Bonds has been stealing strictly on blinding speed, which you have to have to steal, but he has not learned to read the pitchers, and he doesn't get the lead that he will be getting later on in the season when he knows the pitchers moves to first. Hunt takes low and inside for ball one. Hunt asks for time, now steps in. Young Gary Wagner throws. Strike on the inside corner for a ball and a strike. One and one account. count. 
Bonds with a longer lead. He goes. Hunt takes the ball. The throw to second base. Bonds has got 10 for 10. Mike Ryan gunned the ball to Rojas, but Bonds had it beat. The pitch was called the ball. The count is one ball and two strikes, not two balls and one strike. According to Lon, who was watching the call, Bonds leads at second. Now the umpire holds up one ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch on the way to Hunt. Swung on and bounded up the middle, and it's in the center field for a base hit. Bonds scores, and the Giants lead three to nothing. Money broke to his left. He has a great move to his left and deflected the ball slightly, but it had no effect on the play. It is correctly ruled as a base hit. Here's Willie May. May is a right-handed hitter. Ron Hunt is at first. Gary Wagner sets, delivers to May. Did he ever have a home run cut at a fastball on the inside corner? Fouls it to the stand. All in one account to number 24, Willie Mays. Gary Wagner set, throws again. Mays hits a high call fly ball to short right field. Callison is over in the right center, reaches up and makes the catch for out number three. For the Giants, one run, one hit, one error, one runner left. And we'll move to the bottom of the second inning as the Giants lead three to nothing. Ah, oh, there, Lon. Can you think back to the days when you started working in radio? Well, it's been a few years, but I can remember them all very well. Why do you ask? I was just wondering about something. You know, Burgermeister beer has the kind of taste that's really popular right now. A good beer taste that doesn't seem to fill you up, even when you drink several at a sitting. Comfortable, they call it. Yes, I know Burgie's the comfortable beer. Well, I was wondering what people drank before Burgie. Did they drink uncomfortable beer? No, of course not. Anybody in the West who liked a really good light beer always drank Burgie. But I resent your implication. Berg has been around a whole lot longer than I have. Oh, sorry about that, Lon. Sorry. Anyway, the comfortable beer seems so right for today's taste. I just assumed it was something new. Not new, but it seems to be more in than ever. I guess more people are deciding that comfortable is the way they like their beer. And comfortable beer is Bergie. Always has been. Inning number two, the bottom, Darren Johnson will be leading off. Season's average of 277, plays either first base or the outfield and some third. Big number 11, swing in the bat. Gaylord Perry winds and throws to Johnson, low and inside for ball one. One ball, no strike. The next delivery, strike call, slider on the inside. Three to nothing, Giants. Gaylord Perry kicks and delivers to the plate. Darren Johnson swings, does, and get it, strike two. And Perry winds, he throws. Darren swings, misses, the ball dropped, but Deeds who tags Johnson. Throws the ball around the infield. 
Rookie Rojas will be the batter now. Steady ball player, an average of 262. Here's the pitch for Gaylord. Rojas looks at a call strike on the inside corner. The 0-1 delivery. Rojas swings and foul tips at strike two. Tomorrow's daytime pitchers. Air time will be 10.15 Pacific Daylight Time. Juan Marichal against Grant Jackson. Now the 0-2 delivered to Rojas. Swung on and nubbed down the third baseline foul. That all the giant party will take that big bird. Head for San Francisco, arriving there at approximately 8.45. Have Monday off. Some of the fellows still haven't had a chance to find apartments and sublets, etc. I thought it was 8.45. What's it, a 6.15 departure then? Arriving at 9 o'clock, pardon me, approximately. Now the wind-up of Gaylord. The pitch to Rojas. They swung on and missed. Strike three. The Giants will run into the St. Louis Cardinals. On Tuesday night, their first opponents when they come home. Here's the pitch on the way to Don Muddy. Bounded slowly to third base. Davenport lets it roll. Foul ball. Going to be a busy weekend at Candlestick Park with Helmut Day, Saturday, May 24th, and then a doubleheader against the... Pittsburgh Pirates on Sunday. Don Money the batter. Deep in the batter's box. Adopts the slugger stand. And here's the pitch. Strike call on the inside corner. Between games of the doubleheader, Bill Thompson's going to autograph hot dog wrappers, too. He's the guy that can do it. Now the 0-2 pitch. Too low for a ball. Fresh California melons ought to be around, too, when we get home. I'm a freewheeling eater of those. After having hotel food for 17 days. Breaking pitch low and outside. Ball two and strike two. Two pitch to Don Money. Swung on and bounded to shortstop where Lanier has a tricky hop. Throws to first. Money beats it out. Lanier angry at himself. He didn't charge the ball. Let it play him on the big hop to the left. He probably underestimated the speed of Money. And Mike Ryan is the bat. Money was batting 245. Ryan at 218, right-handed hitter. Giants lead three to nothing. Perry set, throws. Ryan swings, nubs this one down the third baseline. Perry up with it, throws quickly. 
and McCovey makes a fantastic grab of a low throw on the hop and hangs on for out number three. Boy, that was a trouble. A real trouble spot. No runs, one hit, no errors. The Bills leave one, and the Giants lead three to nothing at the end of two innings. One, two, three, four. three coming up. McCovey to lead off. Here's Long. William McCovey will lead off with Davenport and Henderson to follow. Mets have scored three more runs in the fourth inning to lead Cincinnati nine to nothing. Cincinnati batting in the bottom of the fourth. McCovey walks in the first inning. Takes outside for a ball. 1-0. Gary Wagner, a right-hander working. Tony Taylor, the third baseman, is... 30 feet off the third baseline, and Money, the shortstop, almost directly behind second. Pitch called strike at the knees, and it's one and one. Ball on the strike to McCovey. Batting here in the third. The Giants lead three to nothing. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Giants home Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon, and Thursday afternoon against the Cardinals. Bob Gibson, Tuesday night. Nelson Bryles, Wednesday. And Ray Washburn on Thursday. Blowing away for a ball. The last time Washburn pitched in Candlestick Park, he pitched no hitter. Two and two to McCovey. Checks his wing pick. Someplace. I don't know where it was. It's ball three. Wagner and Ryan thought they had him struck out. Full count of three and two. Struck him out anyway. Probably swinging and missing. out on strikes as Wagner gets his second. And Jimmy Davenport, who's single to drive in around his first time, will be the batter. This is low for a ball, 1-0. In games that Davenport has started third base, the Giants have only had two losing efforts in games in which he started at third. Low, ball two, 2-0. Two That isn't to say he's won them all, but he's been in there when the Giants have been winning. Strike call, the fat ball on the inside, and it's two and one. Giants got two in the first, one in the second, leads three to nothing. Strike two, two and two. Jimmy has three winning hits hits that delivered what proved to be the eventual winning run. Swing and a short fly ball in the left. Going back as a shortstop money and makes the catch for the second out. Two minute down. You know, your telephone is the easiest thing in your house to move when you're moving to another city. So just call the telephone company. They'll see that the service is stopped at your old address and started at your new one. Anywhere on the bell system. 
Kenny Henderson struck out his first time. Batting left-handed against the right-hander, Gary Wagner. Who delivers to him a check swing and a roller to third base. Up with it is Taylor. His throw, the Giants retired in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. We go to the bottom of inning number three. The Giants three and the Phils nothing. You know, Russ, I was just thinking, I don't know what I'd do if it weren't for pay phones. I'm on the move so much. Big help, all right. There's a lot of them around. In fact, I bet you can't guess how many pay phones there are in California, Nevada. Take a shot at it. 600 million? Uh, you're a little off. I seven. They have 120,000. That's quite a lot of telephones to keep them good work. Come to think of it, their batting average is pretty good. But I have to kind of remind our listeners, if you ever run into a payphone that keeps your dime by mistake, the telephone company will refund it promptly. All you have to do is call the operator from another telephone and tell her what happened. Give her your name and address, and she'll see that your dime is refunded. You forgot one thing, Russ. Did I? That a sick telephone should be well correct. Report the number of the phone that swallowed your dime to the operator. She'll send someone out to give it a check. -up. Go ahead if you want to be a tattletale. Julie Pink. Ratting on a little telephone like this. Gary Wagner will be the man to face Gaylord Perry. Here in the third. Wagner is 0 for 2. Wagner had the distinction last year of going the entire season working as a relief pitcher and not giving up a home run. He has given up two this year. Moving into a starting role. Swing bounds it to shortstop. Lanier has it. His throw out number one. One is down. Tony Taylor, well, the base hit his first time up. The Phils have two hits. They have been infield hits. Taylor's with a bounding ball to Hunt's right. Hunt knocked it down, couldn't make a play on it. And then Money beat out a bounding ball to the nearest short. Davenport even with the bag at third. McCovey even with first as Taylor takes the strike goal and one. Three runs on four hits, no errors for the Giants. No runs on two hits and one error for the Phils. And sidearm to Taylor, bounded to shortstop. Lanier has it. Throws him out by plenty for the second out. Two down. Johnny Briggs, the strikeout victim, his first time coming to the plate, a left-hand batter. Thompson will have all the scores for you at the end of this inning of the American League game played this afternoon and the National League game going on tonight. Left hand batting Briggs against Perry. Takes a strike. Got ball good. Not field playing deep for Briggs and straight away. the bat goes back to the screen and it's strike two. Brick tried to check his swing on that pitch and fouled it off. It's strike two. With two out, the base is empty. Giants three, the fills nothing. Perry's strike two pitch. Struck him out swinging. Went for a bad pitch. Briggs out for the second time on strike. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. Perry gets his fourth strikeout of the ball game, and here's Bill with the other score. The National League tonight the scheduled game in Montreal with Atlanta has been rained out. After four innings, Cincinnati trails New York 9 to nothing. Gentry pitching for the Mets. Maloney started for the Reds. Fisher in the first. Noriega in the fourth for Cincinnati. 
Jones, a three-run homer in inning number one. J.C. Martin, a two-run homer in the third. Chicago and Houston about to get underway. It'll be Ferguson Jenkins for the Cubs and Don Wilson for the Astros. Later starts Pittsburgh at Los Angeles, St. Louis at San Diego. The American League this afternoon, Cleveland 5, Oakland 4, Williams the winner in relief, Hunter all the way for the defeat, Horton a three-run homer for Cleveland. Detroit six minutes out of nothing, Denny McClain winning his sixth game of the year, Dean Chance losing his first after three wins, Norm Cash the Tigers of the game's only home run. New York six, California nothing, Bonson the winner, Bonson now one and six on the year, Murphy the loser now three and two, Pepitone and Ellis homer for the Yankees. Boston beats Seattle 6-1, Nagy the winner, Bell a loser, Andrews, Jones, and Yastrzemski all homers for Boston. Chicago 6, Washington nothing. There's Jerry Nyman on the left-hander with pitched just one inning this season through a one-hitter for the win. Camilo Pasquale a loser. One-night game, not yet underway, Baltimore at Kansas City. It'll be Palmer for Baltimore and Butler for the Royals. Dick Dates will lead off the Giants' fourth. The Giants' three runs, four hits, no errors. The Phils, no run, two hits, and an error. Dates forced the runner his first time, bombing the shortstop. Takes the breaking pitch low for a ball, 1-0. and Gary Wagner suffered through a rocky first and second. Retired the Giants in order in the third. Dates, Lanier, and Perry, the first three. Bounding ball to third. Taylor knocks it down, fields it in foul territory, throws the first, throws the ball away, and bounds off the stand. Deets is headed for second. Ryan down to field it behind third base. And Deets will be at third base. It's ruled a hit for Deets and a throwing. Or second base. What did I say? Third? Second base. Deets moving into second and said throwing error on the third baseman. After a base hit was credited to Deep. So Dick safe at first on the base hit and safe at second on the throwing error by Taylor. Deep at second. And Hal Lanier will be the batter. So hitting an error. That ball back Taylor up. It was a sharp shot down the line. He backed up to try to field it. Kicked off his glove into foul territory. He tried to throw to first base, but overthrew Allen. Lanier up here takes outside for a ball, 1-0. Fills with Allen playing in front of first base, and Taylor shortening up at third, expecting Lanier might be trying to lay the ball down to advance deep over to third. 1-0 count for him, the 1-0 pitch. He tries to bunt. He was bunting for the base hit and fouled it off. Ball on a strike to Lanier. Two errors now for the Phil. Bill Wilson, a right-hander, starts throwing in the Philadelphia bullpen again, the second time he's been up tonight. Giants lead three to nothing. Have deep to second with no one out here in the fourth. Lanier choking up on the bat, the pitch to him. He swings and misses a high inside fastball. One and two. Lanier trying to get the ball to the right side to move Deets over to third base if he doesn't hit it through for a base hit. Allen is backed up at first base now, playing behind the bag. Taylor even, even with third base. Wagner's 1-2 pitch. Swung on, fouled off Lanier's foot. It rolled back to the mound, but it was off Hal's foot, and he limps around. Scott Hughes comes out to check Hal and see if he's okay. Right on the instep, that one got it. The end of four, the Mets nine and Cincinnati nothing. And they're still hobbling. Now Clyde King comes out to talk to us. A tough break for the Giants of Lanier were hobbled. He has not been hitting much, but he's been playing shortstop and really playing. If you can cut off runs, it's about as good as driving them in. Al 
says he's okay. He gets back in the batter's box. Now Wagner asks for another sign. Deets is at second, a one and two count to Lanier. Wagner takes the stretch to pitch the house. Struck him out swinging. They got it by him. You'd like a handy way to keep track of the telephone numbers you call off and just call your telephone business office. Ask your service representative for a copy of the free personal directory. So Lanier is not able to move Deets over to third, and Gaylord Curry comes to the plate. Safe on Wagner's error. Gaylord dribbled it down the third base side, and Wagner threw it into right field. Pitch to Perry. Swung on and missed, strike one. Deets at second base with one out. Look at second on the pitch. Swing and a line drive to second base. Deets gets back into second. Rojas made the catch just above his shoe top, but Money could not get over in time to take the throw. We'll pause for station identification. It's the Golden West Radio Network. Hi, everybody. This is Don Sherwood. I'd like you to tune in from 6 to 9 every morning and meet my many friends. <laughs> Bobby Bonds has singled and scored a run, hit into a fielder's choice, stole second and scored a run. He's up here to face Wagner with Deets in second, takes a strike going one. Ron Hunt has driven in two runs tonight and scored one. I feel deep for Bonds. They give him most of the right field line. His single was to right field. One strike pitch. Popped up on the infield. Rojas, the second baseman, calling for it. Makes the catch from the side, retired. So the error didn't hurt. The fills as it's no runs on one hit, one error, and one left. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. The Giants three, and the fills nothing. You know, Russ, you can do anything with numbers. For example, statistics prove that more than 8 out of 10 people use the yellow pages. More than 8 out of 10? More than that is 9 out of 10. Still, it doesn't surprise me. No, 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 no. You look carefully. 9 out of 10 is not correct. Just more than 8 out of 10. That's where statistics always get kind of peculiar. For example, say 85 people out of 100 use the yellow page. You get like 8 and a half people out of 10 use the yellow page. That half of people doesn't know what is missing. And neither do the other 15. Well, maybe we should tell them. I think we should. The reason for using the yellow pages, of course, is a lot simpler than your statistics. In a nutshell, that's where you'll find almost everything fast. Simple as that. Well, even simpler, because the yellow pages aren't in a nutshell. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, they're in your telephone book. Always handy. Always right at your fingertips. And they list just about everyone in town who sells or serves. Well, the word is, uh, don't forget a half of people. Use the yellow pages and find help fast. in the background you heard wasn't for Russ's magnificent reading of that commercial. It was for Richie Allen. And he causes quite a stir. Allen grounded the third his first time. There he winds and delivers to Richie. Swung on, bounded by Davenport into left field for a base hit. Henderson up with the ball, causes him to second base, and Allen has himself a single. That was a hot shot through the hole. Davenport got his glove on it. Just the webbing deflected it, but couldn't hold on. Allen has the base hit. He's at first with no one out. The third hit off Perry, and Johnny Callison will be up here. He hits the second base his first time. Thrown out by Ron. Short lead at first. 
That's the Callison. Lined in the left field for a base hit. Over the field it is Henderson. Allen will hold at second base. And they're back-to-back -back singles. So Perry in trouble on two pitches here in the fourth inning. As Allen and Callison single from Darren Johnson, who struck out his first time as the batter. Right-hand batting left fielder. Allen at second, Callison at first, nobody out. Three to nothing, the Giants lead. The Phils now have four hits. The Giants have five. Here's the pitch to Johnson, swung on a miss, strike one. Strike count to Darren Johnson. Runners at first and second. No one out. A swing and a miss. Strike two. Oh and two count to Johnson. Giants three. Phils nothing. Bottom of the fourth. The Phils threaten. Johnson, a big man for Perry to get out here. He looks back at second. Allen bluffs away. Perry still looks back there. Comes to the plate. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. There's a big strikeout because the double play now can take the Giants out of the inning. Cookie Rojas has struck out his first time as a batter. Another right-hand batter. Allen, Richie Allen is... Playing center field for Willie Mays. Allen on a second base. Motion Mays over into left center when Johnson was hitting. Now he turned around and motion Mays to play in with Rojas up here. Mays pointed to the flag to show him that the wind was blowing out and that he was going to play right where he was. Or is. Perry's pitch to Rojas. The strike call. Strike two. And Rojas turns to argue with Davidson. If worrying is the only cause of gray hair, Richie Allen has no worries outside of baseball. He will never have a gray hair. Because he is loose when he comes to the ballpark. He doesn't worry. Just give him a bat. He wants to play back. The 0-2 pitch to Rojas. Just misses. Now that time it was deep. And Perry, who took a deep breath after that pitch was called the ball. It was close. It's one and two. Allen at second. Callison at first. One out. Three to nothing. The Giants lead. Bottom of the fourth. Perry pitching in difficulty for the first time tonight. Gaylord takes the stretch, delivers, swing and a miss, he struck him out. Number six for Perry, he has Darren Johnson and Cookie Rojas twice apiece. And he's also struck out Briggs twice, so his six strikeouts have come against three men. Don Money, the shortstop, a right-hand batter who beat out a hit to shortstop his first time is up here. Perry trying to get out of the difficulty. First two men singled. He now has struck out the next two. Outfield straight away for money. He takes inside for a ball, 1-0. Giant infield backed up with two out. Bill Wilson, throw, no, it's not Bill Wilson throwing out there now. Another right-hander is up working in the bullpen for the field. Barry Lurch is the right-hander throwing now. Pitch misses for ball two. And Perry looks in at Davidson to wonder about that one. Deep says something to the umpire. It's a 2-0 oh count. When 
Lurch is in the bullpen, and they call out there. He says, you rang. <laughs> Two O count. Ball three, and Terry says, why? He sidearmed him, and Terry upset on that call. They thought he had a strike. He shakes his head. Davidson said the pitch was outside. Perry turns his back on the plate. The 3 0 count, he's one pitch away from loading him up. Reggie Allen at second base, Johnny Callison at first. Perry takes the stretch for the 3 0 pitch. Ball four. Well, they're loaded up. That's the first walk by Perry. Will go to third base. Callison moves to second. Money is at first, and Mike Ryan will be the batter. Ryan was thrown out by Perry his first time up. Gaylord. Ready eight. Up McCovey with the throw to first base. They made a good play to save Perry and error. The Gaylord working with the base is loaded. Richie Allen to third, Callison at second, money at first, two men down. Three to nothing, the Giants lead. The pitch to Ryan, bounded slowly to third. Davenport charges, his throw in time, and the side is retired. No runs on two hits, no errors, and three runners left on. The end of four, it's... The Giants, three, the Phil's nothing. In our broadcast booth is Miss Nancy Dawson, reporter for She She Sports, a sophisticated sports magazine for sports-minded women. Tell me, Nancy, what did you think of the rhubarb they had on the field the other day? It was awful. Where did they get the recipe? I make rhubarb with sugar and lemon. Well, the kind of rhubarb I'm talking about is a violent disagreement between ball players. It's a violent disagreement between cooks, too. This then was a rhubarb ready. that was started when a pinch hitter got to the plate. Why did they wait until they got to the plate? Oh, you should start your rhubarb a good half hour before then. No, you don't understand. That afternoon, St. Louis got very upset over an umpire's call. Well, I don't blame them. He should have called in the evening. St. Louis is long distance and rates are cheaper in the evening. Or he should have called on the weekend. Rates are low all weekend long. Oh, there are lots of ways to save money on long-distance calls. But that umpire, well, what can you expect from a man who has a chest protector under his suit? Oh, thank you. Nancy Dawson of Shishi Sports Magazine. Inning number five, the Giants in front, 3 nothing. 3-5-0 and oh for the Giants, 0-4-2 oh, for Philadelphia. And once again, here's Russ. Well, he's funny. Yeah. Ron Hunt will lead off, followed by Willie Mays and Willie McCovey. Gary Wagner will have to show a lot this inning, or they'll take him out for a pinch hitter next time. Mets lead Cincinnati 10 to nothing now at the end of three. Wagner throws to Ron Hunt. Half swing, it's a strike. Now the wide up again. Hunt swings, foul tips it, strike two. Two strikes to number 33. And Gary Wagner throws to Hunt, and he almost hits him in the left shoulder. One ball, two strikes.
Is Wagner popping? Not foul to the first base and on the off. So Hot, who has been prolific with runs batted in tonight with a pair, asks for time, stands in. Now Gary Wagner throws the plate. Hunt swings, pops it high, foul off first. Richie Allen over the ball. It blows fair, and he makes the catch in fair territory. That wind is quite strong now, coming over the top of the grandstand, blowing toward left field. Here's Mays, who has not hit tonight, has lined the center field and popped the right. nothing San Francisco here's the pitch inside of the breaking pitch for ball one Made with 591 career home runs for this season here's the wind up of the pitch to Willie strike the fastball on the inside corner batting 350 Here's one and one delivery. Mays sends a high drive to short center field. Should be easy for Callum. He moves in front of Johnny Bridge and makes the catch for out number two. And McCovey will be the batter. And Wagner has steadied down and is pitching some fine baseball after being hit hard early in the game. Millet Willie McCovey and struck him out. He winds and throws and stretch swings and sends what a tremendous distance. The far back, far back, tell it bye bye baby into the upper deck in center field. Boy, he exploded on that one. Just as I said that Wagner is pitching well and McCovey turns things around. The Giants lead four to nothing. McCovey's titanic blow into the upper deck down near center field, far over the temporary barrier that's down in center field. Number nine for McCovey, his first in the month of May. And the Giants lead four to nothing as Jimmy Davenport will be the batter. Here's Wagner throwing to Davenport, inside and high for ball one. Larry Lurch throws the bullpen. Davenport is batted in the run with a hit and his top to shortstop. Takes a call strike. One and one the count to number 12, Jimmy Davenport. The delivery. Jimmy swings on a slider. It's strike two. Not a one and two pitch. High slider is outside. Ball two and strike two. Should be a good pitching battle tomorrow. Grant Jackson against Juan Marichal. 2-2 pitch to Davenport, swung on, drilled the deep shot, stop, money off balance, comes up, throws to Allen in time. Scott is retired, one run, one hit, no errors, nobody left on. Moving to the bottom of the fifth inning, the Giants are leading 4 to nothing. Wake up, honey. After driving all night, we finally reached Wairika. Wairika? <laughs> I thought we were going to Eureka. No, no, no. Remember? Alice said to go to Wairika, then take the highway east. No. It was Eureka, and we take the highway south. The best way to make sure you get to the place you set out for is to come to Chevron Island first. For Chevron Travel Service. The free trip planning service that gets you helpful information on where to stay and things to do along the way. Highway laws, especially marked maps, kept up to date by Teletype and the U.S. Weather Bureau. To get your free 
Chevron Travel Tips, ask for a travel request card at any Chevron dealer or standard station. Then when you set out for Eureka, you'll end up in Eureka. the bottom of the fifth inning, but there's no Philadelphia hitter out yet, but Larry Lurch continues to throw in the bullpen. Very Lurch it is, and there will be a pinch hitter. Gene Stone has just been recalled from Reading. A left-handed hitter. He was the free pinch hitter that Redding had and is supposed to be quite a boy with the bat. This will be his uh, second batting appearance. A left-handed hitter against Gaylord who will work from the windup. He had to pitch under stress his first time in the fourth inning. Gene Stone looks at ball one too low. throws 1-0 and to the plate. Stone takes ball 2-2 two, two low, 2-0. Two oh. He's a stocky fellow. Looks something like Tito Francona as he stands up to the plate. Perry's 2-0 and oh delivery is a call strike. One delivery. Stone runs up to bunt, misses, strike two. Perry has struck out six members of the field. And the two and two pitch. Misses inside for ball three. the three two delivery stone swings fouls it off good to hear from our good friends up in strawberry valley johnny and lee mellow who listen and with all these prohibitive prices here in the east they've offered us anytime we drop by spaghetti and meatballs and strawberry shortcake and you can't hardly be fat the dropping by is the problem The 3-2 pitch. Bounded slowly back to Perry. He'll beat it out. So now it's first pitch. It was down the third base line as he chopped it. No play for Davenport at all. Perry had to feel it. The batter will be Tony Taylor. Perry will be bagged down because you don't want runners on there when Richie Allen comes up to the plate. Brick will follow. Tony Taylor is beaten out of hip to second base and is grounded a shortstop. Giants four. Phil's nothing. Bottom of the fifth inning. Six hits for the Giants. Five for Philadelphia. With the lead at first base. Perry throws to Taylor. Swung on. Line drive base hit to right field. Stone goes to second. Holds on. They throw behind him. He is back in safely at first, and Johnny Briggs will be the batter. And if Briggs were to turn the script around, this could be a different ballgame. He has struck out twice. Right 
ready to go. Perry throws to Briggs. Swung on, fouled up. Right. Richie Allen will stop. down, runners at first and second, no activity in the giant bullpen. Barry Lurch working in the field bullpen. Gaylord ready, delivers a break, swung on, bounded to McCuffin, throws to second base, in time for one. No chance for the double play. Exciting as the sound of native drums, warm as the Polynesian smile, friendly as the hula girl, you guessed it. Chevron Island under the standard sign. Everything in favor of Richie Allen now. They went blowing out to left field. He's still going to make contact. He has singled and fouled out. has been thrown out of the third base. Two runners ready to go. Perry throws to Allen, who takes low and outside. Ball one. Forgot to mention that when McCovey hit his home run, what he did for his RBI total. The pitch to Richie Allen, bunted, foul. McCovey's 26 run run. The fans boo Richie Allen for hustling, even if he hits a home run, it would make it only four to three. He was trying to keep the inning going. down the line at third base. Gene Snow leans at third, Briggs at first, Perry delivers to Allen, who takes inside for ball two. One strike to number 15. Barry throws again. Richie Allen swings and misses for strike two. No foul pitch. Two strikes. And Perry sets. There it comes. It's high for ball three and Perry in deep score. Now we'll watch Johnny Briggs to see if he'd be going at first base. Johnny Callison up next. One out. continues to talk to Dave Davidson, the plate umpire. Perry has walked one man, Don Money, that loaded him up. But he got out of the inning when he got Mike Ryan to ground out. Three and two, Perry ready. He throws to Richie Allen, who swings and nubs it foul to the left of the plate. Four to nothing over the fields.
stretch. The pitch to Allen is swung on and missed strike three. Number seven for Gaylord Perry, and the batter will be Johnny Callison. Briggs held on at first. Callison has grounded a second and single to left. batting Callison with runners at first and third. McCovey behind the runner at first. Pitch to Callison. Bounded high to Rod Hunt at second base. Flips to Lanier and the side is retired. Berry has struck out seven. For Philadelphia, no runs, two hits, no errors, two left on, and at the end of five, the San Francisco Giants lead by a score of four to nothing. Fans, you've heard about the wonderful Chevron Island spirit. You've heard it described as warm, friendly service, true. But there's another kind of Chevron Island spirit, too, and that spirit is lively. I'm talking about Chevron gasoline. They're blended to the exacting needs of today's driving, so your car always runs at peak efficiency with lots of life and pep. Take my advice and do as millions of other motorists do. Get your share of the lively spirit of Chevron Island. Fill up your tank with one of three grades of Chevron gasoline. At Chevron Island, under the standard sign, you'll like the lively spirit of our great Chevron gasoline. The spirit of Chevron Island is calling you. Come to Chevron Island, near to where you are. A friendly kind of island with fresh spirits for your car. Come to Chevron Island under the standard sign. Twelve thousand five hundred fourteen Philly fans here tonight, and a lot of them are giant fans. As we go to the top of the sixth inning, Barry Lurse comes on to pitch, and here's Bill Thompson. Information about him in the sixth inning. Flourish a right-hander for the Phils makes appearance number nine on the year. All I'm relieved. He's one nine lost two. Has an earned run average of 7.80. Flourish last year was San Diego in the Pacific Coast League. 2011 lost eight. Earned run average of 2.84. Colorado boy, 24 years old. Name is spelled L-E-R-S-C-H. Lurch, very Lurch. Facing Ken Henderson, sitting sixth on the Giants order. Henderson, that catcher Dick Deeds, and starts up Hal Lanier. Lurch to the plate, misses low and inside. The ball skips away from Ryan. The ball one. Lurch to a big windup. Last ball, call strike. Gary Wagner started for the Phils, went five innings, gave up four runs. Three of them earned on six hits. Struck out three, walked one. Now Barry Lurch takes over. The 1-1 pitch to Anderson fouled away. Off to the left and into the seats. Lurch in front of Henderson, a ball and two strikes. Henderson called out on strikes on the first, grounded to third in the third. Breaking pitch is high for ball two. So Lurch and Henderson go even at two and two. Lurch comes to the plate. This is inside at the letters for ball three. Book 
struck out on Henderson. Three balls, two strikes. Kenny batting left-handed against the right-hander. 3-2 pitch. Pop foul. Ryan heading towards the Giants' dugout. He's over at the dugout, drifting with a wind, and drops the ball as he falls down. Ryan trying to go along the top of the Giants' dugout. Made a great effort on the ball. The wind pushed it away from him, and he was on the cement part of the dugout. He slipped and fell as he dove for the ball. It was off his glove. And the official score rightfully does not charge him with an error. Again, the 3 2 pitch to Kenny Henderson. Foul to the screen. Out holds bullet three and two. Lurse looking into Ryan for a sign. Right enter, kicks and fires. Foul away again. This one on the ground back to the screen. So Lurse and Henderson in a battle with three and two. Again a 3-2 pitch. Foul away again. This one up on the roof. Pass along the station break as soon as Kenny Henderson has completed his turn at bat. The 3-2 pitch. Inside for ball four. So Henderson walks, and we do pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. KSFO San Francisco. Berkeley authorities announced that anti-loitering regulations will again be enforced from 10 tonight till 6 in the morning. And Herrick Hospital in Berkeley stresses, contrary to rumors, no one has died as a result of the Berkeley disturbance. Catcher Dick Dietz. Forced a runner in inning number one, had an infield hit in the fourth. So Dick one for two. Henderson at first with nobody out. Giants in front four to nothing. First to the plate. This is low and outside with a breaking pitch for ball one. leans on the knee, has the sign from Ryan. Henderson with the lead as Allen plays behind him. Kenny is running. The pitch is popped up. Behind second base, Rojas, the second base on the outfield grass, will make the catch, and Henderson gets back to first. The deep pops up to the Philly second baseman, Cookie Rojas, for the first out. Giants battle will be the shortstop, Hal Lanier. Grounded is short in inning number two. Struck out in the fourth. Facing Lurch for the first time. Lanier choking way up on the bat. Henderson with a lead at first as now Allen holds against him. The pitch to Lanier lying to right field, but Callison goes back. Will make the catch at the warning pass. Al hit the ball right on the nose, but right at Johnny Callison. Gaylord Perry, with a giant batter. Perry, safe on an error in inning number two. Lined to second base in the fourth. So Gaylord 0 for 2. Gray uniform now, completely stoked through with perspiration. First to the plate. Line drive, base hit to right field. Henderson will go to second and hang on as Callison playing shallow quickly throws in. So Perry has the Giants seventh hit of the ball game. His first. The batter will be Bobby Bonds as Perry will put on the warm-up jacket at first base. Giants close out this series here tomorrow. Philadelphia and also the long road trip. Back at Candlestick Park for the first of a three-game series Tuesday night. St. Louis Cardinals for those first three games. And Bob Gibson will be the Cardinals' opening game pitcher. 
Here's Bobby Bonds. Takes a curve for a strike. Bonds singled to right in the first, later scored a run. Was safe on a fielder's choice in the second. Stole a base and scored a run. And popped the second on the fourth. So Bobby one for three. Henderson away from second. Perry from first. Lurch up into the stretch. The 0-1 pitch to Bonds. Ball strike two. Bonds gives played umpire Dave Davison a questioning look. Doesn't say anything. Now Bobby moves back in the batter's box. Lurch ready. The 0-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled to the screen. But the count holds at 0-2. Henderson away from second. Perry from first. Bonds has for time. Apparently has something in his eye as he stands out of the batter's box. Now is ready. And again, the two runners will lead. The 0-2 pitch. Way outside. Ryan bluffs the sort of second, but does not throw as Rojas not, did not move into cover. Gets his lead at second. Perry a short lead at first. Rojas in behind the runner and the pitch is delivered. Ball strike three. A slow curveball. So Bond called out on strikes to retire the side. Burst gets his first strikeout for the Giants in the sixth. No runs on one hit. No Phillies there. Two runners left on. At the end of five and a half. Giants lead it by a score of four to nothing. In the National League tonight, another game. Atlanta and Montreal was rained out. New York and Cincinnati. New York leads ten to three after six and a half innings. Gentry all the way for New York. Maloney, Fisher, Noriega, and Granger have worked for the Reds. Jones and Martin have over New York to drive in five runs. Chicago leads Houston one to nothing after two. Jenkins for the Cubs. Wilson for Houston. Later start Pittsburgh at Los Angeles, St. Louis at San Diego. The American League and day activity. Cleveland beat Oakland 5-4. to four. Williams in relief the winner. Hunter the loser. Detroit 6, Minnesota nothing. McClain the winner is 6. McClain didn't win a 6 last year until May 20th. Chance the loser. New York 6, California nothing. Stan Bonson his first win after 6 losses. Murphy the loser. Capitone and Ellis Homer for New York. Bonson had a no-hitter in that game for seven in the third inning until Jim Pergosi single. He retired the first 19 men in a row. Boston beat Seattle 6-1. to one. Nagy the winner, Bell the loser. Mike Nagy pitching his first complete game in the majors. Mike Andrews, Dalton Jones, Carl Yastrzemski all homer for the Red Sox. Chicago beat Washington 6 to nothing. Jerry Nyman, young left-hander, pitching a one-hitter. Camilo Pasquale a loser. The only hit is a single by Brant Allier in the second inning. I'm going to just pitch one inning this year. After two and a half innings tonight, Baltimore and Kansas City scoreless. Palmer for Baltimore, Butler for Kansas City. Willie McCovey leaves the Giants lineup as Bob Berta takes over at first base. So Berta plays at first base. The first batter for the Phils will be left fielder Darren Johnson. Swings and misses on a change up for strike one. Johnson struck out in the second, again in the fourth. Giants off Davenport at third, Lanier at short, Hunt at second, Bird at first. The outfield from left to right, Henderson, Mays, and Bonds. Deeps the catcher and Gaylord Perry the pitcher. The 0 1 pitch in the dirt bounds away from Deets and goes back into the seats. So a 1 and 1 count. Giants four runs on seven hits, no errors. The Phils no runs, six hits and two errors. Perry 
double pumps. A 1-1 pitch. Low and away for ball two. Well, Gennard drops back on the count to Jaron Johnson. Two balls and one strike. One pitch. Outside for ball three. Johnson steps out as Perry was getting ready to wind. Right-hander Al Rappo loosening for the fill. Pitch to Johnson. Swung on. Missed for strike two. So Perry and Johnson go out to a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Three-two pitch. Fouled off. In 1965, playing with Cincinnati, Johnson drove in 130 runs at 32 home runs. Pairing, Pears and Adits for a sign. Now wipes off the forehead. Again, the 3-2 pitch to Darren Johnson. Sidearm fastball is high for ball four. But Johnson draws the walk. The second off Perry. The batter will be the second baseman, Cookie Rojas. Rojas over two. Struck out in the second. Again on the fourth. Well, the Giants go double play deep in the infield. The outfield, just about straight away. Barry steps and delivers. Fouled off on the ground, back to the screen for strike one. Barry's had the first two runners on in both the fourth and fifth inning. Both occasions. His first two men hitting safely. Pitch to Rojas. Bounded to shortstop. Could be two. Lanier to hunt for one. On to Berta. In the dirt. Berta can't come up with a low throw. So Rojas safe at first. Johnson is fourth at second base. Lanier to hunt. Rojas safe at first base. No error on the play. Hunt's throw. Not the short hop type, but they all an in-between hop and sort of eight bird up, hit him in the shoulder. Kept it in front of him. No chance for Rojas to advance the second. So it's out number one. The battle will be the shortstop, Don Money. Had an infield hit in the second, drew a walk in the fourth. Right-handed batter. Carry the plate. Money bluffs the bunt, takes high for ball one. Rojas at first with one out. Bottom of the sixth, the Giants lead four to nothing. Berta playing a step behind Rojas at first base. Very sidearm fastball is outside for ball two. Gaylar drops back on the count. Two balls and no strikes. again leads to a pitch called strike. Perry in on the count at two and one. Two one pitch. Foul back into the upper deck. 
So Perry, after being behind, goes even with money at two and two. Swung on it, missed for strike three. Money down on strike for out number two. Perry gets number eight. The batter will be the catcher, Mike Ryan. At least Ryan is due to bat. Ryan over two. Grounded, thrown out by Perry in the second inning. And by third baseman Jim Davenport in the fourth. Rojas at first now with two away. And the right hander batting Ryan stands in. Very pitch. Drill the second base. Hunt up with it. Goes to Lanier for the fourth on Rojas and the side is retired. For the fills in the six. No runs, no hits, no diders. One runner left on at the end of six full. Giants four, and the Phillies nothing. Do you get the feeling that you're warm, sunny island at every turn? Well, you're not imagining something. The spirit of Chevron Island is everywhere. Come to Chevron Island, near to where you are. Everywhere under the red, white, and blue of the standard oil sign. Come to Chevron Island, near to where you are. A friendly kind of island with fresh spirits for your car. That's the spirit of Chevron Island. Exciting, friendly. A welcome change of scene for you and your car. Chevron Island. You'll find it everywhere in the West under the standard sign. The Giants are getting very loose in the seventh inning. We'll send up Hunt, Mays, and Burdett. Covey's hip was bothering him a bit again, and manager Clyde King took him out of the lineup rather than to keep him in there longer and aggravate it further. Lurch completing his warm-up, and Hunt, who has two hits and three trips, has driven in two runs and scored one, comes up there. Mays is 0 for 3. He's been retired on three fly balls tonight. Not ready to face the right-hander. Very alert. Lines up to left field for a base hit. Over to field it is Darren Johnson. Ball bounds away from him. Hunt will try for two. Johnson's throw, and Hunt is in at second base. So it's a double for Hunt. His second double of the night and his third hit. goes out to talk to Lurch. Right-handers Raffle and Wilson throwing on the Philadelphia bullpen. The outfield deep into the left for Mays. Lurch takes the stretch for the pitch to Willie. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Oh, one 
count to Mays. 100 second with no one down. Fetch, the right-hander delivers. Curve is outside for a ball. It's one and one. Ball on a strike to Mays. Lurch looks at Hunt, leading at second. One-one pitch to Willie. Pop foul back near the seat. Coming back is the catcher, Ryan, and he can't get to it. It's back into the stand. Two to Mays. Hunt at second base. Nobody out. Four to nothing. The Giants lead. Right hander stretch for the one two pitch to Willie. Fouled away. Stays at one and two. Tony Taylor comes trotting in now to say something to Blurt. And he's going to call Mike Ryan out. So the three of them stand on the mound and discuss the situation. Taylor may be figuring he knows the pitch that will get Willie out of there. Ryan and Lurch chat a bit longer after Taylor's gone over to third base. Count one and two to Mays. So the giant center fielder waits now as Ryan gets back behind the plate and Lurch gloved hand on me, looks in for the sign. Right-hander in the stretch. Pitch to Mays. Check swing and a foul back. That was a fastball in tight. Stays at one and two. Well, after jamming him with that one, we'll see if he goes away with him, away from him with a breaking pitch this time. Mays up close to the plate. Right-hander stretches for the pitch to Willie. Struck him out. Swing and a miss. Mays is out on the strike. Batter now will be Bob Purdy. You know, there's a lively little island nearby that can put real excitement into your everyday driving. That's Chevron Island under the standard sign. You'll like the spirit. May is 0 for 4 tonight as he strikes out, and Berta up for his first at bat. McCovey, who's been in there previously, walked, struck out, and hit a home run. Berta hitting 294. Left hand batter against the right hander. Hunt with his lead at second. Berta fouls it back, strike one. Field straight away for Bob, and they're playing him pretty deep. Strike two, foul to the screen again. So Lurch is in front of Murder with an 0 2 count. Giants lead four to nothing. Hunt led off with a double, but Mays is struck out, and Hunt could not advance, and there's an 0-2 count to Burdett. Outside for a ball, one and two. Giants trying to make the best out of this road trip by winning tonight. One game left tomorrow. If they could win these two, they'd salvage something out of this trip. Foul back. Stays at one and two. A road trip that started out with a rash of injuries. And the Giants who won two out of three in Pittsburgh. If they could take two out of three here in Philadelphia. would certainly turn things around. Splitting in St. Louis and 
Chicago. The Cup Series was the opener in Houston where they were swept by the Astros in three games. Swing and a fly ball down the right field line. Callison going into the corner will be there to make the catch in fair territory. Tagging up a punt going to third. Tries to draw a throw but doesn't get one. So Berta flies to fairly deep right field and Jimmy Davenport will be the batter. Davenport is singled in three tries and driven in a run. And Ryan will go out to talk to Lurch again. Four runs, eight hits, no errors for the Giants. No runs, six hits, and two errors for the Bills. Had Mays been able to move Hunt to third, that fly ball was deep enough to score Ron from third base, but Willie couldn't get him over, and Bird's fly ball just sent him over to third base, but there are two men down now. So it takes a base hit. Hunt bluffing down the line, the pitch to Davenport, a strike over the outside, 0-1. Outside for a ball. It's one and one. Philadelphia fans, as they're wont to do, booing. One one pitch. Strike two. Bill Thompson says they just told the people here it's tomorrow is Sunday and they're booing that. They'll boo about anything. One and two. And the one-two pick. Five for two and two. Ryan bluffs the throw to third. Count two and two to Davenport with two out. Hunt at third base. Four to nothing. The Giants in front. Seventh inning. Two-two pitch. Swung on a drive to deep right. Going back with Callison. Still going back. Still back to the wall. He makes the catch. Davenport hit it a long way to right field. But Callison got there to make the catch to the wall. No runs on one hit. No errors. The runner left on. And as we go to the bottom of the seventh to score, the Giants four, the Phils nothing. Fans, how many times have you heard someone say, I've only got one pair of hands? Drives you up the wall, doesn't it? And you know why? Because nearly every time you hear it, you're in a hurry. But you'll never hear it on Chevron Island under the standard sign. Because on Chevron Island, we have extra hands to serve you. Extra hands. Because there are more men on Chevron Island than any of the other stations. That's the secret of the extra service you get at Chevron Island. So the next time you need a helping hand, drive into Chevron Island under the standard sign. We'll prove that more hands can make the difference. Looking for a friendly change of scene? Come to Chevron Island, near to where you are. A friendly kind of island with fresh spirits for your car. An island just for you, under standard sign. Before we go to the bottom of the seventh, let's pause for station identification. This, I'm told, is the Golden West Radio Network. If entertaining your family with something to do on your day off is becoming a problem, I just might have a solution for you. Aaron Edwards here, Sunday mornings on... Krasnowski will be up here to bat for the pitcher Barry Lurch. Krasnowski making his only his second batting appearance with the Phil. He's 0 for 1, a left-hand batter. He faces Perry. Bounds at the second base on two hops. Hunt has it, takes his time, throws the Berta for out number one. 
One down, Tony Taylor, who's two for three, comes to the plate. Giants got two in the first, one in the second, and one in the fifth. The lead four to nothing.
Two out. Briggs at second. 1-1 one, one count to Allen. The Giants lead 4-0. A high fly ball to center field. Mays and Bonds are there. It's Bonds calling, and he makes the catch in right center for the third out. So in the seventh, no runs on one hit, no errors, and a runner left on. At the end of seventh, score the Giants four, and the Phils nothing. And now Bruce Atkins presents the world. It all started on the golf course. Take Billy Casper's Par Master Slacks by Palm Beach, for instance. Bright, bold colors that'll turn a peacock green with envy. Permanent press with a rep stripe belt. Only sixteen ninety five the pair at Roosh Atkins. Billy Casper's Par Masters. Get a pair and start swinging, you duffer, you. The Giants in the top of the eighth will face a new pitcher, a right-hander coming on from the Philadelphia bullpen to take over the pitching chores. And Kenny Henderson. Kenny Henderson will be the first man to face him, and here's Russ to tell you about it. He'll face Al Raffle, R-A-F-F-O, who was born in San Francisco, but lives now in Jasper, Tennessee. 6'5", 210, graduated from Los Angeles High, also attended Los Angeles City College. With San Diego last year, 11-7, and an average of 2.68. He's been a pro since 1962. He'll face Henderson. Raffo winds, throws. Henderson beats it foul past first base. Past Richie Allen. One strike to count. Henderson bounds one slowly to shortstop. Don Money in quickly. Throws to Richie Allen, who had trouble staying up. Now the 1 0 delivery. Deets bounds it deep to third base, taken by Tony Taylor. He throws the strike to Richie Allen for out number two. Say, do last summer's sport clothes look tacky this season? Word I haven't heard in a long time. Stop in at your nearest Roussette. Headquarters in the West for what's new in sports and casual clothing. Here's the pitch. Lanier takes outside for ball one. You a kid, Rich? Did you ever go to a tacky party? Here's a swing and a foul back. All the other kids are where they're father's pants or something like that. I wear my own clothes. <laughs> now the count is a ball and a strike and the pitch. Lanier swings and misses. Strike two. Now the delivery. Lanier swings, loops the short fly to left field. Money is back, and the Giants are out three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. And moving to the bottom of the eighth inning, the Giants lead four to nothing. And now let's see what Ruth Atkins' question, Paul Spiegel, will be asking Dave Fox. Dave, I have a question today for Mr. W.T. of Santa Clara. He wants to know if only teenagers are wearing bell-bottom pants. Oh, the extreme, I would say yes, Paul. But uh, even in the middle age category and designers' concept, they are wearing flared trousers, which have a bell at the bottom, and are accepting them in those age groups. In the what age group? Oh, 35, 40. Whatever Maybe happened 45. to 35 and 40, Dave. <laughs> Ladies, if your husband hasn't bought a new pair of slacks in months, it probably shows. And there's no excuse for it. What with the incredible selection of slacks you can choose from at Ruth Atkins. At Ruth Atkins, you can choose from every style, color, fabric, and price range. Dress slack prices start at under $20 at Ruth Atkins. Why don't you suggest that he get a couple of pairs? 
He can use Bruce Atkins' famous supercharge and take months to pay. Mention it over dinner. Gaylord Perry in the bottom of the eighth inning will face Johnny Callison, then Darren Johnson and Cookie Rojas. Perry came in with an earn run average of 2.87. He can become the first giant to win six ball games. Callison with one for three. The pitch for Gaylord. Johnny takes inside with a curve. More ball one. Here's the one and all delivery. Swing and a miss. Ball on a strike. Callison wears a black glove on his right hand. throws again to the little right fielder who tries to bunt it and pops a foul and will land on the Philadelphia dugout. Or thereabouts. I'm not going to lean out of this seven-story booth to be exactly sure where it landed, but I knew the Deets couldn't catch it. One ball and two strikes. Number six, Johnny Callison waiting with the Giants leading four to nothing. Here's the one and two pitch to Callison. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Number nine for Gaylord Perry in the strikeout department. Gives him a total of an even 60 on the season. And he will face Darren Johnson, who has struck out twice and walked once. The strong boy from San Diego. throws the plate. Darren Johnson fouls it off. Off the fist. Strike one. On one the count to number 11. Strong boy from San Diego. Perry throws the plate. Darren Johnson fouls it off. Off the fist. Strike one. On the count to number 11. Mets now lead Cincinnati 11 to 3 at the end of eight. Chicago to Houston 1 to 1 end of four. Johnson hits one way high and deep to right field. Bonds goes back to the fence. That one is off the fence, and Johnson may wind up with three. He's on his way to third, and he is in at third base with a triple. Hit it as far as you could and still keep it in the ballpark. The eighth hit for Philadelphia, Rojas will be the batter. Johnson's first triple. And 
the six for the Phillies. Rojas, the batter. Activity for the Giants in the bullpen. Joe Gibbon and Frank Lindsay to throw as Rojas waits. Perry throws to Cookie. It's snub foul down the first baseline. Four to nothing, the Giants lead. Darren Johnson tried to get the run in to avoid the shutout. and hit into a force One and one to number 16. Perry ready from the wind-up throws. Rojas takes strike two call. Turns and protests slightly. Perry to the Rosenberg. The Giants deep in all departments. They'd be glad to give up on the run at third if they can get me out. Perry pitches. Rojas swings and bounds it to Jimmy Davenport at the bag. Holds the runner. Throws to first. In time. Johnson holding third. Don Money, the very likely-looking shortstop, will be the batter. hitting Don Money against right-hander Gaylord Perry. He has his stretch. He throws the plate and Money takes outside for a ball. Double-barreled activity in the bullpen. Dick Farrell's up throwing. The right-hander's getting rid of the joint. Luis Peraza. Pitch to Money is into the dirt and save, but Dick Deets and it's ball two. Do it out of the batter, two down, a runner at third. The Giants leading four to nothing. Eight hits for each ball club. The Phils have made two errors. And now the two and zero pitch. That's a fastball for a call strike. New York defeated Cincinnati 11 to 3. Gentry winning and Maloney losing. Maloney now 3 and 1. The 2 1 delivery. Gaylord Perry kicks, throws. Money swings over the top of the ball. It's 2 and 2. has 60 strikeouts in 77 innings. And the 2-2 stretch. Perry throws to Money, who swings and drills it to Ron Hunt. Backhands it in second, throws to first. Gets him by a step on the side is retired. A fine play on a fast man. And the side is retired. No runs, one hit, no errors. One runner left on, and at the end of eight, the Giants lead by a score of four to nothing. And now, once again, Ruth Atkins brings you a word from the world's oldest living bat boy, Abner Flash Flood. I want to talk about the foul ball. 
Started in off ten with old buzzard Pettigrew. His fastball was so fast, the ball usually went right through the bat and landed behind the plate. The players started calling balls hit behind the plate buzzard balls. And naturally, since a buzzard is a foul, they changed it to foul ball. Now, would you believe that? <laughs> Man, if our redoubtable expert is like most men, and I, for one, am beginning to wonder... He likes sportswear best of all. And when a man likes sportswear best of all, he'll probably like Ruth Atkins, too. Because Ruth Atkins has the biggest collection of all kinds, shapes, and varieties of sportswear. Everything from golf sweaters to socks. For your sportswear needs, remember, Ruth Atkins has it. And they've got it in your size. Lord Perry will come up to bat before this crowd of 12,514. Followed by Bobby Bonds and Ron Hunt. The ball is mounted down the first baseline to Richie Allen for an unassisted put out right at the back. Al Raffo, the new Philadelphia pitcher. Bobby Bonds hasn't faced him. Bonds has singled, scored two runs, stolen the base. Pitch to Bonds. Low into the dirt for ball one. Now the one and oh delivery. Bond swings on a high slider and it's a ball and a strike. The one and one pitch. Bonds loops it in the left field for a base hit. That's his second hit of the Giants' night. Ron Hunt, who has had one of his best nights this season, with two doubles and a single, two runs batted in as the batter. If women faint when you stroll onto the tennis court, you must shop at Rusak. If they don't, now you know why. Visit Roos Atkins headquarters for sports and casual clothing in the West. You might pick up some bands, too. <laughs> Free plug. Bonds leads at first. Al Raffo looks over there, throws the plate, Hunt swings, fouls it off the glove of catcher Mike Ryan. Number 33, Ron Hunt, the batter. Bobby Bonds on at first. It's not indicated he'll run. Now he leads away. Raffle throws the plate. Hunt takes inside for a ball on a count of one and one. Ball on a strike. reliever delivers a pitch out Hunt swung at the ball trying to protect Bonds but Bonds caught out of the pitch out and didn't go so it's uh, one and two to Hunt One ball, two strikes. Number 33, Hunt the batter. A go to first base for Raffo. Four to nothing. The Giants trying to even the series tonight. And Raffo looks in. Six-five right-handers. 
throws to Hunt. Too high, ball two. Now ready for the two and two delivery. Raffo throws to first. Our bonds wasn't leading the way. for time, now steps in. Raffle throws, Hunt swings, hits a foot, could be a double play ball to Rojas, who tags Bond, throws the first for the double play. They rule that he missed Bond. The umpire at second base, ruling that he missed Bobby Bond, but Tony Benson making the call, and Mays will be the bat. about. He's 0 for 4. Two down. Raffle will work from the stretch. He throws to number four, Mays, who fouls it back upstairs. getting a big lead at second. Although he can, as money is well over the hole. Mays takes a high-breaking pitch for a ball on account of one and one. Mays hit one ball real well, a line drive to center field in the first inning. That sent Hunt from second to third after the catch. One and one pitch. Well, there's a base hit. It's going into the left field corner, a sizzling base hit. And Darren Johnson picks it off. Mays stops it first. Darren Johnson picks it off the fence on the hop. Mays drives in the run, and the Giants lead five to nothing. Bob Bird of the batter. to the left-handed batter who replaced McCovey. Swings and sends a short fly to right coming in as Callison and makes the catch to retire the side. For the Giants, one run, two hits, no errors. One runner left and moving to the bottom of the ninth inning. The score of the ball game is 5 to nothing, San Francisco. Say, hey, here's a tip for you golfers. Do you have trouble keeping your head down when you're making a shot? Well, stop into Ruth Atkins and slip your shanks into a cool, colorful pair of Billy Casper's Parmaster Slacks. Tailored by Palm Beach in a wrinkle-free Dacron and Rayon fabric that's just as tough as it is light. And you can select from ten bright, clear colors that range from bronze to powder blue. Perfect for vacation or travel, too. But each pair comes with its own color blend rep stripe belt. And get this, they're only $16.95 a pair at Ruth Atkins. Now, you say, how does this help me keep my head down when I'm teeing off? Well, sir, when you look down to address the ball, you'll catch sight of these smooth, colorful slacks dressing up your shin bones. And, well, once you start admiring how good you look, your head will just automatically stay down. You may slice your shot, but you'll cut a handsome figure any time you wear a pair of Billy Casper's Parmasters. Now at Ruth Atkins. You duffer, you... Ryan will lead off in the bottom of the ninth inning. There will be a pinch hitter for Al Raffo. And then Tony Taylor. The Cubs in Houston, one to one at the end of four innings. Mike Ryan at the plate. Billy Williams has just hit a two-run home run. 
In the top of the fifth inning, the Cubs lead Houston 3-1. to one. Now the pitch on the way to Ryan. Low for ball one. Perry with a win and a shutout in his grasp now. Lines and throws again to Ryan. Mike takes a call strike. One and one. Ball on a strike to number nine, Mike Ryan. Perry Wines comes in with the next pitch. Bounded high to Davenport at third. Up with it over to first in turn. We'll pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. You may not know who I am. My name is Tenderloin Tom. And I listen to Pete Scott on Sundays from 4 to 8 on KSFO in San Francisco. Time before the pinch hitter appears. Apparently, Bob Skinner didn't tell him right away that he was going to pass. Ron Stone, not to be confused with Gene Stone, who acted as a pinch hitter early in the ball game. could turn himself into a precious stone for the Phils if he can get one hit. He's had nine for 55, an average of 164. A lot bigger than Gene Stone. throw to Ron Stone, low and outside for ball one. One ball, no strikes to this left-handed batter. Gaylord checks with Dick Dietz. Now throws again. Ron Stone takes a call strike, and it's one and one. Ball on a strike. And the one and one pitch. Too low on outside for ball two. Stone takes wide, ball three. It's a count of three and one to this left-handed batter. And Perry winds the throw to the plate. Inside and off the glove of Dick Deed, Stone hustles to first base as it was ball four. And the batter will be Tony Taylor. There he is, walk three. Tony Taylor has had two hits. waiting. The lead by Ron Stone at first. The pitch for Gaylord. Strike call on the inside. His 
next stretch and the pitch. Taylor checks wings, bounds it to Berta. Makes the unassisted put out at first. That's all. And it's out number two. And Johnny Briggs, who rattled a double high off the right field fence, his last time will be the batter. The left-handed batting Briggs, who can hit him a long way, and has speed to go with it. Johnny has always seemed to be a fellow that would turn into a better than average ball player. But he's had all kinds of chances here with the Bills in his five years. This is his sixth. He's been troubled by a bad back on occasion. But he has not lived up to his potential. Very throws. Briggs takes low for ball one. Briggs wearing number 12, plays the outfield and first base. And does a lot of pinch hitting for Philadelphia. Here's Perry Reddy. Steps off and looks at second base at Ron Stone. has a big swing and misses. Tonight, he has struck out twice, hit into a force out and doubled, and died at second base when Richie Allen flied out. Counts the ball on a strike. Perry to the Rosin bag. Don't forget, kids, helmet day. Giant souvenir helmets for all kids 14 and under, no matter what price the ticket. On May 24th, and then the doubleheader against Pittsburgh on the 25th. The pitch to Briggs is low for ball two. Perry is soaked with perspiration. Here's Perry ready to go. He delivers to Briggs. Low for ball three and a count of three and one. Barry's trying to go the distance for the seventh time this year. He failed to do so Monday night against Pittsburgh. Although he did not figure in the final decision. George Myatt watching the runner at second. Perry ready. Throws to Briggs. Ball four high and outside. Perry walks his fourth man. Richie Allen will be the back. And a big one by Richie could change the complexion of the ball game, even with two down in the ninth inning. Joe Gibbon and Frank Lindsay. Runners at first and second. Number 15, Richie Allen waiting. Perry shut out. And even the ball game hanging in the balance. Gaylord delivers to Allen, who swings, pops it high. Down the right field line in foul territory. Berta is back there. He reaches up and he's got it. It's a shutout for Gaylord Perry. For the Giants, five runs, ten hits, no errors, no runs, eight hits, two errors. For the Phils, the losing pitcher Gary Wagner and winning his sixth is Gaylord Perry. Now this is Russ Hodges for Lon Simmons and Bill Thompson. Reminding you to stay tuned for the Giants Clubhouse, which follows, and inviting you to be back with us tomorrow evening 
tomorrow morning, rather, at 10.15 for the Giants' Bills game for Philadelphia. That broadcast time again is 10.15 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Our engineers were Rich Smalley and Walt Lee. The final score again, the Giants 5 and the Phils nothing. So, fans, that concludes another Giants baseball broadcast.